Hey there, uh, I am having a problem with my Fireface 800. Went to work on a project and I got blinking lights and noise. So it has uh, changed my priority of things I need to get done. I thought I would document my process real quick to see if uh, what I go through to hopefully repair it helps anyone else. If I'm successful, I'll post this. So here's what's happening. When I go to turn on my Fireface, Right here I get some flashing lights. You can see it, the clip lights, flashing on and off signal lights light up and if I put on some sound through the headphone jack here, I get that sound coming out of the headphone jack. I'm going to turn that back off again and watch how it kind of slows down as the voltage ramps down. It does that with the sound as well. So I've seen some similar problems posted on the internet, but none quite exactly like that. The solution seems to be replace the capacitors in the power supply. So I'm going to get to work on that and I will be back once I've started that process. Now, I'm sure like many of you, you get uh, too many projects to work on at once. This one has vaulted to the top of my project list, but my first step is I have to deal with this thing where sometimes stuff gets away from me. This is my electronics area, so step one, clean out a space to work. Alright, here goes. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. I think I can work here. So next step is I uh, pull the fire face out of the rack and bring it on over to the bench. All right, so I've got it out of the rack. Next step is to get the case off. Ground connector there. Case came off pretty easy. Pull off ground. Set that up to the side. All right. Now I'm I'm in, and you know, based on the research I've done, and maybe the research you've done, we're looking in the power supply section for bulging capacitors. And oh my goodness, here we go. I don't know if we can get in close enough on the camera, but right here, right here definitely bulging capacitors on the power supply. So it seems like the power supply is the problem. Um, I'm going to grab the camera get a close-up of those bulging capacitors so you guys can see that really clearly. Okay, so here in a close-up hopefully you can see these two capacitors nearest the edge. I'm trying to hold my camera steady here. Here and here. Yeah, the tops of them definitely bulging upward. So it looks like uh, replacing the capacitor on the power supply are the thing to do. Okay, I'm back. So since the last video I have uh, gone on to DigiKey and ordered 13 capacitors to match this. I want to uh, say thank you to the folks on the Gear Sluts forum who uh, have a really nice thread and in the description of this video I'm going to put a link to that thread that kind of gives a lot of insight how to make this particular repair. There is a bill of materials like this one posted in there and I started from the bill of materials that was posted in that thread and I had to make a couple of replacements because DigiKey didn't have all of those specific parts in stock. By now that, that thread is a year or two old so I made some substitutions. I'll uh, take a picture of that um, and throw it up on the screen. So here it is. If you'd like to pause here and take a look at my bill of materials, yeah, there it is. That's what I ended up getting. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Pull out this power supply. Got four screws holding it in. 
Now once I get this going, I am going to make sure that I am replacing these capacitors only one at a time. I don't want to pull out a whole bunch of stuff and then end up losing track of what goes where. I do have a, a piece of notebook paper over here, so I am going to be trying to keep track of uh, which capacitors goes and go in which slots and always being careful to make sure that I get the uh, polarity matched up. I always want to put the new capacitor in the right direction. I took electronics class in high school, had a nice vocational program at my high school. I took three years of electronics class, which has proven quite handy for me over the years. Um, but I put a capacitor in backwards one time. Uh, once was enough. That thing was loud when it exploded. Um, so you want to make sure you're very careful to make sure to keep your polarity the same, positive and negative. All right, so let's see. It's kind of a bit of a forest over here near the actual power plug, so I am going to, as best I can, try to work on this board without taking it all the way out. There's another video on YouTube where the guy pretty much does it like this, and I think it looks like that's going to be a reasonable way to work on this board. So let's see if I can get this reoriented a bit. And I think I'll be able to work on it from this direction. So I'm just going to start from the edge of the board and work my way in. I'm going to start here with C17. And can't quite Yeah, I can't quite read it, so I'll get that thing out before I know which capacitor value is going to go back in in its place. I've got this handy desoldering tool here, the Heiko 808. And, you know, I've, I haven't had this for very long, so I've only used it a couple of times. Hopefully it will do well for me on this job. pretty loose here. Let's see, yeah, this leg is out, that leg is still push up. There it went. Okay, so there is no indication as to positive or negative on the board. So I'll be really careful about my orientation on the way out. I've got my negative stripe here, so negative is going in towards the heat sink. And this is 2200 microfarads with the negative going in towards the heat sink. So I'm going to come into my bags here and find 2200 microfarads. So this is a 16 volt capacitor. And I'm replacing a 16 volt capacitor. So that's pretty much the same thing. In the thread it suggested 50 volt capacitors and I guess I didn't really read well enough or I probably would have upgraded to a 50 volt capacitor versus another 16 volt capacitor. But you know, that's what I got and so I'm going to throw it in there making sure I identify the negative right here and put the negative the same direction as I got it out. So drop that guy in there. Bend the legs out a little bit, hold it in place. I got my soldering iron here ready to go. First one's in, a little 
snippers here. Alright, one down. Next one. Gotta be really careful that I'm following the right leads. I'm thinking these two. These two. You can see in here, here we go, we got some, some kind of putty glue. Hope I can get these out pretty cleanly with that glue in there. We'll see. here and I think I'm closing in on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I'm down to my last three. It's going pretty quick. one. It's the big guy. Alright, so this last one looks like it's a snap-in kind and my uh, my solder pump just can't quite get around it, so I'm gonna have to try something else to get this guy out. I've got a little braid in here. Did it. I've never had much luck using braid. It's never been my favorite. I can give it another try. Let's 
try this one. This one's giving me a hard time. There we go. I think I've got it now. Aha! He's out. That one was a pain. It's bigger. I don't know if it's going to fit. It should fit. It should fit. There we go. Got him. All right, well, there you go. 13 capacitors in the board. Alright, so next thing I want to do, because you know sometimes that flux makes a bit of a mess, I've got a little bit of 99% uh, rubbing alcohol. I'm going to clean up the bottom of the board here a little bit. Well, jump and you see on here I was able to pull quite a bit of flux. You can see it's nice and nice and brown on either end of that. Put this bad boy back in. No fail. To take it back out, I lost a washer. This should be the easy part. <laughs> Alright, so there you have it, 13 capacitors replaced, power supply put back in, and I'm going to turn off the camera for a minute and I'll be ready to fire this thing up in just a few minutes when I'm sure the alcohol has dried off the back of it, and we'll see if it works. Alright, so here we are, the moment of truth. I've given it a little bit of time to dry off, it's sitting on my bench, it's plugged in, we're going to turn it on and see. Here it goes. I was hoping. Hey, hey, that is acting as expected. All right, I'll try it again in the rack hooked up to the computer to make sure, but that looks like this has probably been a success. Uh, all in all, that took me about an hour's worth of soldering. Um, Desoldering and resoldering, so about an hour's worth. My bill of materials you saw uh, and the picture was about $14 shipped, I think, is what it cost me. I don't, I don't see it on the sheet, but um, all in all, a success and definitely worth it. Like I said, about $14 and about an hour's worth of soldering. And that saves me what I've been reading was like a month or two to send it back to the factory and a couple hundred dollars at least to get it replaced otherwise. So uh, I'll check in with you one more time when I've got it put on the computer, but I think a success. Fantastic, and hopefully this will be helpful to you also. Alright, at this point I've got it back in the rack. I've got it hooked back up to the computer. I have it tested and everything. So here we are. Back in the rack, we got all the lights Right lights lit up, all of the preamps work, um, all of the, bring you up to my computer screen here, the controller works, all of the controls here work, sound works, everything is working. So, anyway, um, I hope this was helpful, helpful, helpful to you if you're having this problem with your fire face. It seems like a fairly common problem. So uh, hopefully this adds to the knowledge base and uh, a successful repair. Again, thank you to uh, those of you who have come before and put your materials out there on the internet. Again, you'll check the uh, 
the comment section below or the uh, information section below the video to uh, get a link to the, th the forum threads that helped me so much in getting this done. And cheers to you, and if you're having this problem, good luck. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, thank you very much.